Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm a lecturer in pharmacy practice here and I also practice as a pharmacist at the Royal Barch Hospital. So today I'm going to introduce you to hospital pharmacy. The aims and, ob and objectives are to give a basic overview of hospital pharmacy, um, explain the differences bit of the different sections within a hospital pharmacy and different roles, and go through, through some of the regulatory and policy frameworks and describe how medicines are supplied in hospitals. So what do hospital pharmacists do? Here we're really thinking ahead with regards to different careers within hospital pharmacy and making sure that you know the roles that are available within the hospital and how as pharmacists we get involved with patient care. So a trust is an organisation within the NHS comprising of one or more hospitals and services. The trust chief executive is in charge of that trust and um, they are responsible for medicines supply according to the controls assurance standard for medicines management. And this is a, a, tr an, a document that's been produced by the Department of Health. You have the chief pharmacist or clinical director and they are in charge of pharmacy um, and their role is to ensure that procedures and processes are in place for the safe handling of medicines. And then you have um, nurse ward managers or sisters or they might be called a charge nurse and they're responsible um, for everyday use of medicines on the ward or within a department it, within a hospital and they're to make sure that those medications are used and stored correctly. The role of the responsible pharmacist is explained a bit more in the introduction to community pharmacy lecture. Hospital pharmacies in general don't need to be registered as long as they only supply medicines to their own patients. If they do sell medicines, then they need to be registered with the GPHC and then they would need a pharmacist in charge of the pharmacy at all times. And generally this would tend to be the pharmacist in the dispensary who's doing prescription screening. So the, the pharmacist who is responsible may change throughout the day. Um, it tends to be in, the, in hospital pharmacies, in the dispensary, you have a rota and people will come, pharmacists will come in and out on a sort of hourly basis um, so that responsible pharmacists can um, frequently change throughout the day. At the Royal Barcher Hospital, we have about 100 members of staff within our pharmacy team. We've got pre-registration pharmacists or foundation trainees as they are now known. Um, and that's people like yourselves who've finished the pharmacy course, graduated, and you're rot rotating through different specialities within the hospital and gradually increasing responsibility through that training year. And by the end, you'll, you'll be expected to be doing your own ward. Diploma pharmacists are within hospital pharmacy. Generally, pharmacists then go on and do further clinical training to help care for more complicated patients. And then we have specialised pharmacists. So these might be pharmacists who are going into the management role or become consultant pharmacists, very specialised um, and, and provide exceptional clinical input into patient care. So these are much more senior pharmacists. We have pharmacy technicians who have a variety of roles. Management, again, um, uh, within the, dis uh, they do dispensing, uh, help cover wards, clinical work within clinical trials, and also aseptics. Pharmacy assistants, although they're not registered within the GPHC, undergo training to be able to carry out the duties that they do um, within the department. And then we also have pharmacy porters who are responsible for transferring transferring medic medication to and from wards, departments and pharmacy. There are several milestones within hospital pharmacy. We're just going to briefly go through one at a time so you can sort of understand how pharma hospital pharmacy has developed over the years. So in 1986, a Nuffield report was produced and this was set up due to the increased cost of drugs within the NHS. This recognised pharmacists had good expertise um, that was not being used to the full, full extent that it could be. And this is where clinical pharmacy um, began to become more standard 
um, using better use of our skills to support staff and also providing an on-call service. The next document in 2000 was looking at patient-centred care and using staff knowledge and skills in a better way and in particularly looking at how pharmacists could contribute to this. So there were lots of recommendations that came out of this report. One stop dispensing. So up until now, we had we would supply one week supply of medication for a patient on a ward and this would be stored in the trolley and we would have to redispense that medication every week. One stop dispensing um, meant that we would supply at least two weeks worth of medication with directions on the labels. Um, generally, it will be a full box, so sometimes it will be a month's supply, depending on the dose of the medication that the patient was taking. And this prevented this prevents uh, redispensing the medication every week. And it also means that there's medication on the ward with directions ready for discharge. Self-administration has not taken off very well. Um, it's all about patients taking ownership of their own medications while, while in hospital. But in reality, um, it tends to be things just like inhalers, creams and sometimes insulin. Ward visits were generally focused on general wards, but it was recognised the importance of taking a drug history on admission and by pharmacists and then sorting out problems on the admissions ward before a patient was then transferred to a regular ward. In 2001, a spoonful of sugar was a report published due to, again, rising costs in medicines. The review found medicines were not always optimised, leading to poor quality of patient care and higher costs. Medication errors have effects on patients and also NHS costs, and many patients do not take medication as recommended once they leave hospital, which is an area that pharmacists can be heavily involved with. So the recommendations were automation of medicine supply, dispensing robots have been introduced, increasing efficiency and also decreasing errors. The introduction of electronic prescribing, and this was to, the aim was to increase out to the whole of the NHS. Original pack dispensing to avoid packing down and um, split boxes and wastage and one stop dispensing. The importance of again sticking to that one stop um, dispensing and making sure that there was medication on the ward ready for discharge. In addition to this, um, where possible use patients own drugs to help keep costs down. You might remember this from the news in Stafford Hospital and um, due to high mortality rate and in also in response to complaints from patients and relatives, um, an inquiry was carried out and the Francis report was produced. The Francis report was a report on failings in patient care. It's not pharmacy specific, but we can take learning points from it. If things are going wrong, then we need to discuss them and not cover them up. There were multiple instances of poor patient care in this instance and staff felt that they could not speak up and it went on for some time before it all came out. As healthcare professionals, we have a duty to report concerns um, and as students, you will also be expected to do this while you're on, pa well, while you're on placements. The Carter report was all about quality, efficiency and productivity in hospitals. Acute hospitals began to look at safety and optimisation of medicines um, and ensured that people in different areas got the same standard of treatment. Summary care records were introduced so pharmacists could access GP records to help them complete drug histories and ensure that patients were prescribed the correct medicines on admission to hospital. Before then, we had to phone up GP surgeries um, to try and get lists of medications for patients and await letters and faxes from them. So it made it a, a lot better, um, more efficient service. In 2017, the Royal Pharmaceutical Society produced standards for hospital pharmacy. This was based on patient focused care. So giving information about medicines so, so patients can make informed choices about their medication and their care themselves. Things like medicines reconciliation, pharmaceutical care um, and monitoring the patient for their progress became more standard. 
This guidance um, gave expectations on how services should be run and it was split into different domains. In the first domain, putting patients first, so thinking about patient focused services, giving information about medicines and supporting patients with the effective use of medicines. Episode of care, whether that started at pre-admission or on admission right through to the patient's discharge. An integrated transfer of care, thinking about the patient's needs and professional responsibilities of everyone. In the second domain, uh, looking at medicines government, so thinking about the effective management of medicines and supporting other health and social care staff. Using digital technology and informatics to support medicines use, um, implementing safe systems of care, safety culture, um, and safe systems of work supporting other healthcare professions so medicines could be used in a safe way. Efficiently supplying of medicines, so looking at the whole process here, so medicines procurement, distribution, storage, and unused medicines. Thinking about pre preparation of manufactured um, unlicensed medicines and the dispensing process. Leadership, lots of different types of leadership leadership, so professional, strategic, operational and clinical leadership. Looking at systems, systems governments and financial management, so thinking about how um, financial management complies with regulations and regu regularly reviewing our standard operating procedures. Strategic workforce for workforce development, looking at workforce planning, workforce quality and assurance and managing budgets, making sure you've got the correct staffing level and all those staff have the appropriate training to carry out their role. So now it's time to test yourselves. Um, have a go at answering these questions and then we'll have a go, we'll go through them in the next screencast.